How's everyone doing today? This is another installation of the Muscle Building 101 series that I started about a week ago. Uh, so in today's episode, I'm here at the workstation. I figured it'd be a good time to cover a quick topic on something that's somewhat misunderstood as I guess most things are in the fitness industry, but I figured today when it comes to muscle building, I'm going to be covering two main topics and it's going to be the relation between strength how to build strength or the factors that influence strength, the best rep ranges, sets, the best exercises for anybody out there looking to build strength or just to know the difference. And then I'm gonna go into uh, building muscle or hypertrophy as you see in the title. So I'm gonna go over the factors that influence that, uh, the best rep schemes, rep sets, rest times, and the best exercises for that as well. There's gonna be timestamps in the description below in case you wanna skip to a specific point in the video that you'd have more interest in. I do have studies linking down below to back up everything I'm saying. Before we jump into the video, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. Got all your fitness related content right here at this channel. So subscribe and learn all you can. First topic we're gonna cover is strength, all right? Now, for strength, there's three main factors that influence how strong we are. These aren't in any particular order, by the way, but the first one's gonna be muscle mass, neurological adaptations. The third one is gonna be essentially how familiar we are with an exercise, all right? So by muscle mass, it's pretty straightforward. The amount of muscle, that's gonna determine the absolute strength potential in that muscle. So in other words, a bigger, stronger, doesn't necessarily mean that it is stronger, but it does mean that it has the potential to be stronger over the long term. Now for neurological adaptations, what I meant by that is essentially efficiency in the nervous system. So let's take an example. So a beginner comes in the gym and you know, right off the bat, obviously they're very weak. Their muscles aren't used to it or their nervous system more specifically isn't used to lifting weights or lifting specific loads. So over time, actually within the first four weeks of lifting for a beginner, they're going to see a jump in strength. You know, maybe you remember that first time you started working out and you went from literally in four weeks doubling your bench press or doubling your squat, things that only happen pretty much when you start lifting and never again after that. And that again has to do with neurological adaptations and your body creating and strengthening the motor neuron pathway from the brain to that muscle and working it in that specific motion. That kind of ties into the third reason I mentioned, which is familiarity with an exercise. Familiarity with an exercise. What that means is kind of like the same or kind of like the last one there is how much practice you have at the movement. So as I always preach, People say they wanna increase their bench press, they wanna increase their squat, deadlift, shoulder press, whatever the case may be. It's simple, just like anything else in life, just do it more. Frequency, repetition is key here. That's something my football coaches always used to tell me back in high school, you know, get in as many reps as you can, and if you can't, it's mental reps, mental reps, visualize. You actually create stronger mo motor pathways. As I mentioned before, this is basically just leading to the fact that practicing the movement will increase strength over time. Now, one key thing here that we're talking about is volume in relation to strength and hypertrophy. So volume, meaning the total amount of work that's being done in either a given session or given week of workouts, okay, is actually crucial to building strength because of those factors I just mentioned. You need volume to build muscle. The more work you do, that means you've done more repetition, you've gotten more practice, more familiar with the exercise. Therefore, strength will come. Now, one thing to mention, muscle mass is related to strength in the fact that a bigger muscle means bigger strength potential. However, it is the least important factor of the three that I mentioned in order to build strength. You can see this pretty easily by examples at looking at weightlifters or some powerlifters that are very, very, very low weight class and don't seem to have that much muscle. However, their strength is of insane strength proportions. So in comparison to their body weight. So again, it has to do more with repetition and the neurological adaptations than it does have to do with muscle mass. Now you're wondering, okay, so what is the best way to train to build strength? Now that's a very good question. I'm sure most people understand the rep ranges. So the rep ranges are usually lower. We're actually looking for anywhere between three to six reps is the best to uh, increase strength. And the reason for that is because we incorporate higher intensity. Intensity meaning the percentage of your one rep max that you're using in that given session or in that given set. So 
the closer the weight you're using is to your one rep max or your maximum strength, the higher the intensity is. When training in a lower rep range, say three to six reps, the intensity can be much higher. It's not as much volume as it would be for say a bodybuilding workout, but I'll get into that in a bit. The sets are gonna be anywhere between four to seven. You can even go more than seven. I'm giving you a general range, four to seven. If you do more than seven, it's gonna be a very long session with just the one exercise. So sometimes, and I've done this myself, you'll do 10 sets of three reps, for example. The intensity is extremely high, therefore the rest time has to be extremely high and you're doing 10 sets, all right? And let me tell you, it's pretty funny to see people's reactions when they come up to you at the squat rack or at the bench press and they go, hey, uh, how many sets you got left? Oh, well, you know, usually they talk about oh, like two more, one more. I got eight sets left, actually. Oh, what? <laughs> so yeah, that's, I would say four to seven. Seven even gets pretty long, but again, depending on the progression you're on, four to seven sets, three to six reps on heavy compound exercises. So this does not go for isolation movements. You don't want four to six reps, you know, that many sets on isolation movements, meaning single joint movements. I'm talking multi-joint, for example, bench press, squat, deadlift, overhead press, barbell row. These kind of things are multi-joint, big movements that require a lower rep range. Also going so heavy on isolation exercises could be potentially pretty dangerous. So that pretty much covers the strength aspect. Now we're gonna move over to hypertrophy. The factor that mainly affects muscle building as opposed to three factors, nothing like that, it's only one main factor and that's volume, okay? So total amount of load lifted. Let's say uh, somebody working on strength might only lift a load of, just throwing a number out there, a thousand pounds total throughout the workout, okay? Whereas a bodybuilder would be doing more like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 in order to maximize muscle building, you know, time under tension, muscle damage, all these things that really help to create hypertrophy. Uh, so that being said, the rest times are usually lower. And that being said, since that's pretty much the main determinant on muscular hypertrophy, uh, you can really do it with any exercise. You can do any amount of sets. You can do any amount of reps as well. You can do one reps, you can do 100 reps, okay? Anything in between. Now the relation between strength and hypertrophy on the hypertrophy side of things does exist. Strength will help in hypertrophy because if you think about it, if you're able to lift 2,000 or let's say 2,000 pounds total in one given workout session, you have to get stronger in order to lift more than 2,000 the next time, unless you just kept adding volume over time to the point where your workouts are like 10 hours long. Nobody's gonna do that. And of course, doing that would still increase the muscle, which technically increases the strength. So strength and hypertrophy, believe it or not, they do go hand in hand to an extent to an extent more so hypertrophy affecting strength. Recommended reps, rep ranges, sets, exercises for hypertrophy. I know I just said it, however, I'm gonna give you the best recommendations. You always hear it in the magazines, you've seen it, you probably still hear it or see it all the time, and I even recommend this to a lot of people looking to build muscle. Three to five sets, eight to 12 reps is the optimal range for hypertrophy. The reason being, at eight to 12 reps, you're able to lift a decently high intensity, okay? So about 70 to 75% of your one rep max on any given exercise or muscle group. What that means is you're gonna be able to fit as much volume as possible in the shortest amount of time. So again, doing 1,000 total pounds of volume in one workout is not, shouldn't take as long as two or 3,000 like a bodybuilder wants to do, right? More volume. However, as the volume gets higher, you want to cut the rest times down. So generally bodybuilders are around 60, maybe even 30 seconds rest sometimes. Whereas strength athletes or powerlifters are more like two to five minute rest times. So um, bodybuilders, eight to 12 is the best to make sure you get it done in, let's say an hour's worth of time, you're getting much more volume. And three to five sets is good. That's enough to get the uh, muscle damage and all the load you need. As far as exercises, of course, isolation exercises are key here because 
in order to increase cross-sectional area, aka muscle mass in a certain area, you have to isolate it in order to maximize that. So you can do bench press only for your triceps and they will grow to an extent. However, you are not able to recruit as many muscle fibers and exhaust the muscle as much by putting all the load simply on that muscle, aka tricep extensions, overhead extension, push downs, same thing with back. You can do pull-ups all you want and they're great for bicep growth. But if you wanna maximize bicep growth, again, add the extra volume and simply hit the bicep alone. Bicep curls, preacher curls, single arm curl, all that kind of stuff. That's why those exist and that's why you see bodybuilders doing it. So now that you understand that the, the strength and the hypertrophy are pretty much hand in hand um, to those extents that I mentioned and you know the rep ranges and the sets, I guess I could tell you now about the program that I offer. It's called Beyond Hypertrophy uh, Strength and Muscle Building Workout Program. This program has a progression system built in it, okay? It's a linear progression. It's mostly linear and somewhat undulating. The methods that will get you results over the long term, hands down, it's all based off percentages. It's all calculated 14 weeks and you do have the ability to restart the program over and over again to see maximum results. So beyond hypertrophy, strength and muscle building, 14 week program. If you want more info on that or you wanna inquire on that or get a copy, go ahead and send me an email. I'll have my email in the description below. Go ahead and follow my Instagram, my Facebook. I'll be sure to uh, have all my contact info on there. If you're looking into online coaching, workout programs or anything like that, just questions in general I can help you out with that of course thank you all so much for watching the video I hope it helped it was a little bit rushed you know I, I will be having some good content coming out next week so stay tuned Monday Thursday every week I got you covered go ahead and follow the insta like I said go ahead and hit that subscribe button comment below smash that like button if it helped you out if you learned something share with your friends I think that's enough uh, plugins for today <laughs> that's it thank you for watching the video enjoy your day I'm out